As we close out our celebration of Black History Month tonight, we bring you something special. In music, when a composer creates a new album, they call it a project, especially when the music is something more than just notes and chords. Bassist Avery Sharp refers to his new work, 400, an African-American musical portrait, as a serious project. That's because it chronicles the 400 years, starting in 1619, when the first enslaved Africans were brought to this country. Sharp performed his new album recently at his alma mater, the University of Massachusetts at Amherst. Producer Dave Fraser sat down with him after the performance and shares his story. That's what they tell me. Longtime bassist, composer, and recording artist Avery Sharp released his latest work in 2019 entitled 400, an African American Musical Portrait. It was uh, Dr. Shirley Whitaker, who's a um, kidney doctor, and I was at Whole Foods and I ran into her, and she goes, uh, 2019. And when you say that to a lot of black folks, who study a lot, I knew immediately what she meant. It's 400 years, 1619 to 2019. And I just kind of spaced. I just started hearing a whole bunch of music and she started smiling. She goes, you're not really listening to me. And I said, no, I'm just hearing all this, this music now. How would I approach 400 years of Africans, African Americans being in this country, you know, from a musical standpoint, you know, and it's not a, it's not a celebration, it's just a acknowledgement. Come on, come on, come on, come on, you gotta wake up, wake up, rise up. The music tells a harrowing yet inspiring tale, century by century. Joining Sharp on stage are some heavy hitters in the jazz world, plus his extended family choir. Every artist has to have their motivation. My motivation has always been my family. JKNM is the first initial of, of my four kids, Jade, Keto, and Kosi, and Maya. And so I, I just honored them by naming the record label after them. Much of the music that Sharp composes and performs is music with a purpose. He has written pieces inspired by the stories of a number of noted African American figures. From abolitionist Sojourner Truth, to star Olympic runner Jesse Owens, to Primus Mason, the 19th century Springfield philanthropist. You know, I was influenced by artists from the, uh, from the 60s. People said something, you know, when they saw some injustice. It's not like, go along to get along, or no, I'm just an artist, I don't get political. You are political. I don't care what country you are, you, you're, you're political. You may not want to be, but not saying anything makes you political, makes you silent. You, you just watch things as they happen as opposed to, to getting into them. So you, you are involved. Sharp was born in Georgia at a time when segregation was legal. His mother was the choir director in the Church of God in Christ and gave piano lessons to everyone in the family, including Avery, who was one of eight children. So I went with my mother everywhere. If she played for revivals, I was there, you know, so I so she's my first musical influence. By the time he was a teenager, Sharp had discovered the electric and eventually the acoustic bass. His family would move to Springfield, Massachusetts, and in the early 1970s, he enrolled at the University of Massachusetts. And it was there that he was exposed to the world of jazz. Max Roach was there, the father of bebop music. He wasn't just coming up from New York, he lived. He lived in Amherst. Archie Shepp, one of the great uh, masters on saxophone, who was a, a John Coltrane protege. He was at the University of Massachusetts. Uh, Reggie Workman was my first bass teacher who used to play with John Coltrane, but he was coming up a couple days a week from, uh, from Brooklyn. But that was like in the mid 70s, that was, I mean, it's hard to get those people together in New York. And here I had him on, um, on a campus. After graduating from UMass, Sharp would hit the road playing hundreds of gigs worldwide but it was fitting that he would return to the UMass campus with his quintet and the extended family choir for their performance of 400. Throughout the 
Throughout the concert, Sharp uses the African-American music of each era to tell the epic, fluid story of those descended from the original Africans brought in bondage to America 400 years ago. The album's penultimate track, Ain't Gonna Let Nobody Turn Me Around, is punctuated by Sharp's niece, Sophia Rivera's spoken word. America, land I love, country that despises me in one breath and pays me in the next. I am black, I am American, I will not be dismayed, I will not retreat, I will not back down. I will kneel, I will stand, I will march, I will vote, I will run for office, never backward, onward, forward. There is no turning back now. Sharp's final song on the album is called 500, a riveting and adventurous piece that points the way towards the future. It's a mystery, I don't know, but in terms of hoping, I would hope that the country looks and thinks a little different and that people just let live and let live. I'm always trying to give people some information. That's, that's my political thing. I'm not trying to slap you across the head. I want to entertain you. But when you walk out, I want you to say, dang, I want you to think. You know, I just don't want you to say I had a good time. I want you to have a good time, a great time. But if, by the way, wow, I learned something. And for me, I think that's, that's what we're here to do.